oh my God, I had this little fly flying around my head. And I don't know if anybody watched that like presidential, like vice presidential debate with like that fly and Pence. Every little fruit fly that I see, like when I go outside, I'm like, oh my God, stay away from me, away from me. But like, anyway, um, I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Mr. Crane here. And today we are going to be drafting spirit contracts. So a lot of you have been reaching out to me saying that you are beginning your spirit spiritual journey or maybe you have started your spiritual journey a while ago, but you never really had a clear sense of direction of what you, where you to go, right? A lot of you are sort of new to the process of waking up, have just activated and are just kind of in a place of trying to get your bearings, but you're interested in the world of the paranormal and you're just trying to figure out where to start. So I've decided what I'll do is to start throwing out little tips and tricks along the way when I think of them of things that I think that you should probably be doing on your journey to just kind of get you off on the best footing. So for to this for today's video we're going to be talking about spirit contracts what that means and how to make one. So it's one thing to be super interested in 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 tarot cards or super interested in crystals or super interested in this world, right? But the thing is, if you decide that, you are now deciding that you are now interested essentially in the world of energy. And if you're going to be working with energy, it is very important for you to understand how to control energy, right? How to control your relationship with spirit and how that's going to go. A lot of you are experiencing, for lack of a better term, phenomena. You're experiencing the sensations of, of spirit, the feelings of spirit. You're, you're, you're experiencing hearing spirit. Maybe some of you are experiencing actually seeing spirit. And the thing is, you're not in a place yet where you have the ability to control it. I want to say to that, don't worry about it. It will come over time. But the best way to start the process of controlling and to start it today is by making a spirit contract. So what is a spirit contract? A spirit contract is literally a contract between yourself and spirit, okay? And you are going to draft it yourself. In this contract, you are going to say what the relationship between you and spirit will look like. That way you then have the ability to control it, right? We don't want to have you out there all open and energetically sensitive and not having the ability to control it, okay? So let me give you some examples. For me, one of the things in my contract is that I do not want to see spirit physically. I do not want to see physical aspirations of spirit, meaning I do not want to see ghosts, period, point blank, period. I'm not into it. That is an aspect of my spirit contract. Another part of my spirit contract, I don't want you in my house. I don't want to come out of my room at three o'clock in the morning to go get a glass of water and have you standing in my kitchen. I don't want you in the hallway. I don't want you sitting on my couch. I don't want you watching my TV. I don't want you in my house. All right. That is part of my spirit contract. Your spirit contract, you will, or in your spirit contract, you will decide what the working relationship will look like. And then after you establish all of your perimeters, you will then establish what you're willing to do in order to keep that. A spirit contract is unilateral, meaning you decide what it is at all times. You also have the ability to edit your contract or amend your contract as many times as you want at all times. Spirit does not negotiate with you when it comes to your contract or whatever it is that you're comfortable with. They're just happy you're willing to work with them at all. So essentially your contract is gonna say, I will work with you and you can actually write that down on your piece of paper. Okay. So I'll write it down. I will work with you under the following guidelines. And then you're going to consider what you want those guidelines to look like. Right. So I will give you guys some suggestions on what I think you should put in there. I suggest that there should be a clause somewhere in your contract where you do specify that you do not want spirit popping up whenever they feel like it. OK, I also suggest that you put a clause in your contract saying that you. 
yes you, will not pop up on spirit whenever you feel like it, right? Because it's reciprocity, it's, just, it's, it's give and take. What you're asking for is respect and you're asking for boundaries um, in regards to dealing with spirit. And so in the spirit of reciprocity, you want to give the same thing back. So I'll give you an example. One of my things to give back to spirit is I do not go on haunted house tours right? I do not go to haunted site tours or anything like that. I don't mean like a haunted house that was set up for Halloween and someone jumps out behind a corner and they scare you. I mean, when they say ghost tours, I do not do that because what I'm not going to do is disrespect a, a spirit or that is already having a hard time resting, right? I do not visit grave sites for the sake of visiting a grave site if I'm not personally visiting a loved one because I'm not going to disrespect a place where spirit is at rest by walking over their body, right? So for me, that's how I show reciprocity. And I put those things in my own personal spirit contract. Another thing I would suggest you do is write in your requirements of protection in your spirit contract. So say something along the lines of, when I'm working with spirit, I ask that all of my ancestors or my past loved ones, my mother, my father, my grandfather, whatever, my spirit guides, my angels, I ask that whoever you want present on the other side be present whenever I'm doing spiritual work. What this will do is cloth you in blanket protection, right? Where that is always there. And I'll give you an example of how it is for me. My requirement for spirit, because this is what I do, right? My, my soul's purpose is to be of service to the collective because this is what I do 24 seven all the time. It's just what I, this is what I am, right? My, my, my expectation when it comes to spirit is that I am protected all hours a day, seven days a week. Even if I do not meditate, even if I forgot to say a prayer, even if I haven't cleansed my, my crystals, my my part of my contract is if I'm going to work with you in order to assist the collective, you will make sure that I remain protected indefinitely, perpetually through this lifetime, right? And so this covers every time that I may have forgotten to do any sort of to cast a circle or um, to, to, to create a white light bubble. Anytime I'm doing any of that or I've forgotten to do any of that, that clause protects me all the way through. That clause also protects me at night when I want to sleep. You are to make sure that I am protected. If this is my work, if this is my soul's work, you will make sure I am protected so I can fulfill that duty. That is part of my particular contract with spirit. So you can make your contract look however you want it to look. But the idea of having a spirit contract is that you start that dialogue and you establish your boundaries. If there is something that makes you afraid or there is something that you feel spooked by or uncomfortable with because you're dealing with spirit, you put it in that contract, right? There's another thing that I think that you should put in your contract or at least at a minimum, hold it in your heart. I think it would be a good idea for you guys to take some time to consider which team you're joining, right? And so when I say by that, what I mean is, are you joining the light team? Are you now going to be a practitioner of the light? I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't have any interest in being a, practi a practitioner of the light, I cannot help you after this point in this video. I, there is nothing else I can do for you because I serve the light team. I do not serve the darkness. So I highly suggest that you pick which team you're going to play for. I also highly suggest that you pick the light team. Once you pick the light team, it's settled. I have a lot of people that reach out that are afraid that something bad will happen to them, right? Nothing bad is going to happen to you. If you pick the light team, you're protected right? Because there are implications that come with being of the light. There are implications that come with being of the light, the light worker. I suspect that that will be another video later down the line, um, but you will be fine, okay? And so I suggest that you get an idea within yourself of what you want to do. What type of practitioner do you want to be? Do you want to be someone that is dealing exclusively with magic? You can write that into your spirit contract and you can write in how you want spirit in order to help you with that. You have the ability to decide how they help you. Just ask, it's all a request. And I want you to know that how your contract looks today is not gonna be how your contract looks next year. As you grow into your in your journey, 
You will amend things. You will decide that you're ready for more things, that you're ready to handle more energies, different kind of energies, maybe work with different kind of beings, and you will expand your contract. There will be times when you don't want any of that and you will restrict your contact, make a contract and maybe you'll take things out. And it's okay because your contract is unilateral. Under no circumstances do you have to ask spirit for permission to amend it. Spirit is very compliant. They are very understanding and they want to work with you. And they're and so they're going to be very accommodating, right? Spirit has no ego. It does not serve spirit to disagree with something that you have said. They don't do that. But you want to start doing this because this is helping you to establish energetic boundaries and boundaries with spirit. When you can start this of saying no to spirit, right? When you start dealing with maybe sort of different beings if you want to if you don't want to then that's fine put it in your contract then you will never have to worry about dealing with them right but if you want to this lets you practice the art of making boundaries with spirit and making boundaries with energies in other realms and on the other side they are very accommodating right there's a lot of you that says maybe you hear a lot maybe they talk too much maybe it's hard for you to go to sleep put that in your contract say after a certain time in the evening i do not want to hear from you put that in the contract they will be accepting of that. So uh, I hope that this this video was short and sweet, but kind of to the point and that you understand um, or you have a better idea of kind of like how to work with spirit and how to establish those boundaries. But I would actually say that this is a really proper first step. Before you do anything else, it's really important for you to sit down with yourself and decide what that relationship with spirit you, you, you want to look you want it to look like or how you want it to look. It's very imperative that you do that because that is a, it, it sets up all the steps that come after that. It's very hard to learn the fundamentals of any sort of spirituality without first understanding how you want to be spiritual and how you wish to act with your spirituality. So I suggest that you do this. Um, if you watch this video in the month of October, because we're coming up on Halloween, this is a really good time to do it because the veil is really thin, right? The messages will come in and out really quickly. Um, I suggest you do this simply when you are in a relaxed state. Um, I do not think this is something that needs to be done after you spend an hour in meditation or you take a spiritual bath. I think it's literally something that like keep uh, a piece of paper just out. And as you think of things, that you do want or you don't want, write it down. Write it down. And when you feel like it's complete at the end, simply write thank you. And then it's done. And that is your spirit con contract. And you'll notice people that have been feeling incredibly overwhelmed by spirit and like not understanding how to shut them off or, or tell them to shut up, right? Like they, they're just yapping, 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 yapping. You'll notice that all of that will start to die down because you've now set a boundary in place. So I really suggest this method um, for you guys that are sort of beginning practitioners and I'm trying to figure out a way how to shut them all up. Also, by the way, guys, um, separate related, a lot of you have said that they talk too much and it's bothering you and you can't filter them out. You can literally ask them to be quiet. Just tell them, just like that, just say, hey, be quiet. You know, you can also say, hey, shut up. That's also works. No, they will not be offended because again, they exist outside of the ego. There is nothing for them to feel challenged by. So, and they're, and it usually is followed with a, mm, okay, apologies. And then they shut up. So they are actually very compliant and they are actually very respectful. So just have that conversation with them. I know one time my lights were flickering and I yelled at them and I said, stop flickering my goddamn lights in my goddamn house until you pay bills up in this place. Don't touch my lights. And immediately my lights stopped flickering. So they have a sense of humor. It's fine. Just tell them not to do it. And it's fine. So anyway, guys, this is the end of the video. I hope that this was a really sort of helpful trick that you guys can use and practice. And I hope you guys have fun getting on with your spirit contracts as you're starting your practitioner journey. And as always, if you like what you see, subscribe to this channel and I'll see you guys soon.